I don't know. If you're a Rolex rider and you're worried about dirtying this thing up, I don't know. Maybe don't be. <laughs> ride it like you want to, you know, have a good time. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another video on the InMotion V12. Jeez, how many have I made? I don't know, a lot here. <laughs> I might regret it later, but anyways, today we are talking about the design of the InMotion V12. We're going to be talking specifically about the internals and the externals, so all the above. I'm going to talk about sort of, you know, the waterproof rating. We're going to talk a little bit about the motor. We're going to talk a little bit about the control board, the whole nine. I'm going to give you, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything there is to know and uh, hopefully it is very useful to you. So uh, let's dive in. Coming alive. Whoa. Now is the time. Whoa. Don't try to hide. Whoa. Cause I'm gonna call you like an animal. Really quickly, this video is sponsored by eWheels.com here in North America and eRides.com in the UK and Europe. So if you'd like to make the purchase of an electric vehicle of any kind, find the respective links down below in the description and uh, support this channel. All right, let's get back to the video. Personally, I believe this wheel is a really uh, brutalist, fierce looking wheel. I think it's badass. Um, it has a very HR Geiger inspiration, at least in my opinion. You know, if you've seen the Alien movies, uh, that set design, the, the, you know, the whole like aura of that film, of those films, sort of is embodied, if you will, in an EUC here. You know, you've got the alien drone sound that it makes when you ride it, coupled with some of the interesting attributes on the outside. So let's start with the exterior here. Now I've got a tabletop set up here that's a bit messy, but I'm just gonna dive in and just get real dirty here with you and show you the things that I appreciate, don't appreciate, what's interesting, that kind of thing. A lot of people were asking, is it gonna be durable? Is it gonna hold up in a crash? To be quite honest, I think to some extent the answer is, of course. And to another extent, I have no idea. You know why? Because I haven't crashed it at 40 miles an hour. But we can make some, you know, inferences based on how it's designed. And I think a lot of the design is a very robust situation. You've got one big side panel on each side, which is a really robust panel. I've dropped it quite a few times on there and just got some scratches on it. But it really depends. Like I said, if you do a 40 mile an hour crash, the only wheel that's really gonna hold up Truthfully, in that situation, it's probably a Sherman. I mean, you might get lucky. So, but in general, like you're gonna see a crash or a cutout if that were to happen to you. I, I believe this front panel, which you might be able to see here, is just a little messed up here. This is what's gonna take the brunt of that if you go face forward or something. But yeah, so this is so cool. I love this. It's a venting situation here. Obviously to get airflow, we'll come back to why that is, but I just love this. This really, this is like the linchpin for me that sells it as this like alien type thing. I just love this uh, design here. So props to the uh, designer here. But the best part is, you basically have a couple of screws here and this thing just rocks up into place and slips underneath the top panel. And so if you were to break something or smash something, the side panels zoop, come off and then you have these things. This is the front and the back here and these can just be easily replaced. So if you're someone who thinks you might be prone to wrecking your wheels, maybe buy a whole other shell or, or a couple of these because these are probably the first to go. But in general, I mean, you can kind of see the plastic is about the same as any other wheel. They're not, I don't think they were going for robustness here. I think they were trying to branch out and try something new and innovative. I don't think they were trying to be, some people online have said like, oh, is it close to the Sherman? And like, no, nothing is close to the Sherman and robustness. <laughs> uh, this is like a standard unicycle. Um, so I really like this. And the front bumper here, if you can see, it's, it's made of rubber. So I feel like this is gonna take some impact really well. It's just sort of screwed in up here, so you could potentially just replace this if it tore out or whatever. It probably might tear out, but this is really gonna give you some good protection too upon falling. And obviously, as you know, there is a kickstand, so if you would like to stand it upright if you need to, that kickstand is killer. So moving on from this, we have obviously, this is just the back panel here. Um, just flap, a lot of people have been saying, oh, maybe that's a problem. To be fair, it is a bit flimsy. Could they make it better? Maybe, but I've ridden this thing in the rain and unlike say an RS from Gotway, this is up and down. So if it's raining and it's like kind of flopping, it's still kind of covering it and you're not gonna get water inside there really. I don't think it's anything to worry about. I'm fine with it. The next thing I guess we can talk about, which is like the big thing, let's go deep inside and then we'll pull ourselves back out of the shell itself. 
uh, would be the control board. So what I'm about to show you is gonna look wild to you, but I'll kind of clean it up a little bit and explain. So here it is. This is the top compartment to the control board. So what's interesting about this is, again, this is gonna look really wild to you, but trust me, it's just because I've taken this apart to no end and inspected it. And it's in like two pieces as typical of in motion. So you've got these two, basically you got your five volt, this is a short piece on top, and then the rest of the board is down here. Then you have all of these MOSFETs here. Uh, hopefully you can see this on the camera. To be fair, it seems to be the smaller MOSFETs that like maybe the V11 has. So I think there might be a potential for blowing some of these. Maybe, we'll see. So far I've pushed it very hard in traffic here in New York City and not had an issue. My temps have been really good as well. That brings me to the big thing, you know, the big man of the hour. This massive heat sink on the bottom of this. So this heat sink is what they're relying on. This is their crux. They're putting all their eggs in the basket of this thing, really keeping it cool. And so far, like I said, it's been pretty great. Now, to be fair, it's been, you know, like spring, wintery. When I've ridden this, I mean, I've had it since uh, this, uh, like Christmas time. So I've, you know, cold months here in New York, but it's kind of gotten spring recently and it's been pretty great. So this might be the best thing they've ever done or it might be a failure point because there is no fan on here. But so the big thing is this, it's, it's sealed with this giant rubber gasket here, which hopefully can come through. You've got a gasket right here. There's a lot of, um, thermal paste everywhere, and then there's this other gasket down below here. So when this big top piece sits down on top of here, it slides all the way down in once I were to squeeze the um, wires through. Essentially, it makes a seal right here, and these screws, these screw holes here, basically allow you to screw it in. And there's a seal on both, both ends. On the bottom around that, which drops basically on top inside the wheel of the wheel well. So this drops, this heat sink drops right into the wheel well. And so there's a really thick, great seal here with this um, rubber. And then you have one obviously in the middle there, which makes contact with the sides of this. So this is a very like watertight situation. When you put that heat sink, I call it the motor block. When you put the motor block down in, that is what's causing this wheel to be top heavy because of how heavy that whole heat sink situation is. That doesn't mean it's a bad wheel. You, there are ways to understand how to ride a wheel that is top heavy. Clearly, you've seen other footage of me riding around and having a good time on this. And the other part is all those cables have a lot of slack because it needs slack to come in and out and snake around to get on top and connect again. I don't know if it's an issue, but they've given so much slack that when it's connected, you gotta kind of just tuck it down into like the creases and then the crevices, which feels not as sexy as you'd expect from an in-motion wheel, but everything else is basically cable managed. Just the design of this whole motor block is fascinating. So it's sealed. So you're not gonna have that like moisture get to your control board like some of the other companies are having issues with because it's just like an open window right into everything. So this is the battery. So unlike a Gotway wheel or some other company that just shrink wraps it, they have made a watertight seal on this battery enclosure here. This is so great and so slim that, you know, if you have to do a battery replacement for some awful reason, I don't see why you would, um, but it happens. Um, it's just an easy little pop in, screw it down on there. It's one of the safest battery setups I've seen so far. So the other big thing that a lot of people online, I'm sure are wondering and they're asking and they're chomping at the bit to know, did InMotion put the accessible smart BMS in this battery setup? like I've been vouching for and pushing in the community? And the answer is no. And it's not because they decided not to, it's because I put that video out and started talking about this at a point where this wheel was already in the works. If you understand the pipeline of everything, like they had already sourced the batteries and this whole enclosure and the setup and the BMS, it was all done way before I was brought in to um, be a part of the situation. But they have assured me that the InMotion V13, which is in the works right now, will have that. Um, let's hold them to it. I hope they don't, you know, punk out and try not and try to go back on their word, but they assure me it's gonna be in that. Yeah, I don't know if we can see this very well. I'm gonna turn it upside down, but obviously there's a big hole here. Uh, hopefully you can see it on the other camera angle here. There's a big hole straight down and you can see that's where the heat sink sinks right down into here. Uh, and then we see these um, speakers here. The speakers, you've got four speakers, but there's like a tweeter on each side. So I, I, I thought it was eight at first, but I guess it's only four speakers. They're pretty good, they're decently loud. They're not the loudest ever, um, but they're pretty, if you're, going, if you're somebody who likes to ride and cruise and have the speaker system, it's pretty good, you know? All right, so here's the heat sink. And then this, as you'll see here, once the control board is there, it goes right down on top and it just 
situates there and gets screwed together and you can see so this is your entire motor block it's your entire enclosure here and this is a well-designed thing i'm really in love with this and as you can see there's still air ventilation to some extent because the wires had to get through here as always Riding a unicycle is gonna be safer for it than idling it, so keep that in mind. But the way this sort of works is, I might regret this because it's not screwed together. So it sits right inside there. So now you can see it's perfectly situated inside there and all those wires, they come up and out and you connect like the motor phase wires here, the batteries connect right here, the XT90s. Then all the other wires kind of just get connected and then you just kind of shove them down in here. Again, this is a weird thing for me. I feel like it's kind of strange, but it seems to be okay and work. I mean, I don't know how they would have solved that without it getting over, it's already kind of over-engineered, but that's just the reality of that. And once you have that situation, you have your top panel that will need to be connected to it. This is one of the, what I call like roofing design situations that I'm really into. Let me grab that top piece for you. So this top piece here, once everything was connected, is gonna have a few wires that you can see. This is gonna be your lift sensor wire that you'll have to connect It'll be, it'll be loose up top here, and then you connect um, the screen wire, and then you have your light and um, on and off button. So th those are what goes on top there. And then obviously you have your screen here. What I love about this screen situation is it's the appropriate amount of quality we need, I think, for a wheel like this. You, you don't want it to be too expensive. Otherwise, if you do end up breaking it, it'd be a you know, real pain in the butt. But essentially, once, it, once it's sealed inside, it might be easier to see on my top view here, you have this little like mini control board that has like a ribbon cable and it connects right in there and two screws hold it down. So you can see how if you were to like annihilate this screen, once you pull the seal and rip this up, you, as long as you didn't destroy this control board, you would just put a new screen in. But I would imagine a replacement would come with another one of those boards as well. Step one is you've got everything sealed inside that control board box, the motor block that is like watertight. Then you have this on top. And then you've got these, right? So you just sort of line this up and it slides right up in there like that. And then it'll be screwed together, obviously. And then the same thing here. So you can see how there's this layering happening. You know, you got the motor block, then you got this piece, which is all the way across, and then this layer and this layer on top here. The last thing I want to showcase to you guys was just how this um, side panel gets put on here. So this is the side panel here. You can kind of see just, I don't know, the thickness of it all. It's, it's not as robust as the Nikola, but I think all the parts together make this whole wheel e even more robust in some respects. So I wouldn't uh, be down about that. I think it's gonna hold up pretty well, especially if you have side pads on here. It's gonna really protect that side shell. I've, I've taken some big spills on this, not at super high speed, and I've also taken some pretty gnarly spills on the polo court as well. So it's, it's held up pretty well. You know, I think, it, I don't know. If you're a Rolex rider and you're worried about dirtying this thing up, I don't know, maybe don't be. <laughs> Ride it like you wanna, you know, have a good time. So this obviously sits right down on top of here and it just sits right on top and there's about 10 screws all around the sides here. Once this is lined up, you got like four across the top here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and that is how this gets situated. Now, once that is on there on both sides, I think you're gonna have a pretty good seal here. And I think that the, the pad situation is a bit of contention for me. This is something I went back and forth with InMotion on for a long time. I personally believe they should not have added pads at all. It should have just been a creative, you know, flat moving up of the shell here to the top. But I get why they wanted this. They wanted this whole like, you know, plasticky like um, panel situation so it could hide those screws for design purposes and allow you to get into it. So it just pops in just like this. And you just, it's like up and then lay it down and push down and that's how it gets in. But for me, when you have a pad thing, like maybe you've got custom pads like Law had made me or you have the Clark pads, which is what I generally use for day-to-day -day riding. Um, if you have it up high to some extent, like the Clarks are a bit taller, you're gonna have to overlap this a little bit, which is a bit annoying. It's okay, but what I would have rather done is been able to place this thing anywhere I needed to put it and not have to worry about this annoying thing in the way. So I can just get the most traction possible, but you know, it hasn't completely prohibit, prohibited me. I wanna have a wheel that if I screw it up, I can easily swap the parts to make it look better again. So I think this wheel kind of does that pretty successfully. So for me, as far as design goes, with the rubber bumpers, um, the sort of like layered terracotta roof uh, paneling here, 
and the you know sealed uh, control board I think this is like you know they've nailed it here and they've really beat out the competition in that respect so this the kickstand the whole nine the screen I'm really excited about how this wheel has been well designed so hopefully it's visible here on the overhead um, you have again I've got a whole video on this but you have three registers you got low medium and high and I have it in the low right now because I'm cruising around New York but basically you have one two three four steel screws that just have to be popped out and you're good to go you just put it into the next register overall this is a Nikola killer you know on certain aspects I think the Nikola does a little bit better here and there uh, but overall all the amenities you get all of the safety you get out of this my Nikola will be going on the East River <laughs> so so excited about this wheel. I hope you guys are too. This has just been kind of a different video, but I wanted to sort of dive in and showcase what this all looks like and uh, hopefully it gives you some more value. So if you haven't checked out my V12 playlist with all the other videos on the subject, go find that on my channel and give that a watch down and let me know what you think. But I think that's all for now. And as I say, keep riding, never stop.